It is no secret uh, that that you don't like AMC stock. <laughs> that basically you think it's going to a penny a share. Um, and so we know sort of your viewpoint uh, on the company going into earnings. Um, what caught my eye in the notes that the producers gave me is the violation of debt covenants in the fourth quarter of 2021. Can you tell us about what will trip those covenants and whether or not AMC has the funds at this point after all these capital raises to pay back that tranche and take care of, of that, uh, that slice of debt? It's a great question. I mean, obviously, this is a company that's still burning cash. I mean, look, the, the box office, for all the excitement about sort of the return of movies, which I think you've seen a lot of like, you know, movies are coming back and you see a lot of people excited about it. But the reality is the last four weekends, if you just add up the last four weekends of 2021, they were down nearly 60 percent compared to the same four weekends of 2019. So the point is, you can't really generate meaningful box office. I mean, the top movie of the year, I think Black Widow is like around 170 ish million dollars. That's pretty disappointing in the scheme of a Marvel movie and the same with F9. So the question on the covenants is a good one, Melissa. Um, obviously, you can always renegotiate and you can always change things with your lenders. But the last filing AMC had said they, that they needed to get back to 85 percent of pre-COVID box office in Q4 and Q1 just looking at the numbers week after week, and they've been getting worse. I mean, really, since Delta started picking up, everything you see is getting worse. I mean, Viacom shifted. Paw Patrol is going to be day and date on Paramount+. Plus. I, you know, I think the studios are just looking at this going, if we put out a movie only in theaters, we're going to lose money. I mean, Snake Eyes must have been a massive bloodbath for Viacom because there's just not enough box office attendees or, or movie theater attendees out there right now. And so it certainly looks very problematic for AMC. It'll be interesting what they say tonight on their earnings call, but all things point to the fact that they're not going to be able to, to meet those covenants in Q4. I'm glad you mentioned the earnings call, uh, Rich, because uh, shareholders make up uh, about 80% of shareholders are retail investors, 4.1 million of them, according to Adam Aaron in, in a tweet uh, recently. And, and the call is going to be open up to, to retail investors. As an analyst on Wall Street with a sell rating on the stock, do you have the same access that you had before to the company and to to asking questions on these calls? AMC was not taking our questions before or or, or um, you know after they sort of shifted to focus on their retail shareholders. I think just the important thing to remember is there's been sort of a, a lot of questions or a lot of story out there about sort of these quote unquote diamond hands uh, of these retail investors. Um, sort of attacking um, the short sellers. And the reality is short interest has really dried up. I mean, this is the, the, the crazy thing now is, is that you've got a lot of retail shareholders trying to convince other retail shareholders to buy the stock while they're clearly dumping the stock. And, you know, I think it, the stock's basically had from its highs. It just shows you retail is selling. And, you know, the reason they're selling makes a lot of sense to us. The reality is the box office is very underwhelming. And movie studios, I think the, the single biggest question over the course of the, like the remainder of calendar 2021 is if you're a movie studio and you don't have a streaming strategy like an HBO Max or a Disney Plus, do you put your big blockbuster movie out in Q4 or do you hold it into 2022? Because putting it out in movie theaters, it just doesn't seem like there's enough people willing to go, especially for family films. It, it seems like financial suicide. 